For all the best tips and strategies, check out the Ultimate Utility app. Links are available in the description. I'm not going to lie, the last seven days have been absolute hell for me. For those of you who don't know, I have three kids, all under the age of eight. All three of them got sick with influenza type A, which is the less common flu. In fact, my daughter has missed seven out of the last eight days of school, if that tells you how sick they were. Needless to say, I came down with the same symptoms and it absolutely wrecked my voice. I've been anxious to make videos this entire week, but without the means to commentate, I couldn't. So first of all, I'm sure almost everyone that plays Infinite Warfare is aware by now. But if not, the new patch is live. In my last video, I covered all the weapon changes this patch contained. However, for an even more extensive look at it, feel free to check out fellow YouTuber The Exclusive Ace. He just did a video showing the before and after effects for all the weapon balancing. I'll put a link in the description and I highly recommend checking it out. Now for this video, I always get comments asking me how far I am when it comes to challenge completion in Infinite Warfare. Now keep in mind I'm just a part-time YouTuber with a full family as well as a real-life job. I'm lucky if I can play three hours in a full week. If I had the chance to play this game every single day for multiple hours on end, I'm certain I could be at almost 100% by now. So as you can see here, I've got three categories at 100%. Those being the Outfitter Challenges, the Special Ops, and the Score Streaks. I've covered quite a few challenge help guides in some of these categories already including the bandit challenge in the outfitter section. And by the way, if you weren't aware, for some reason or another, you can complete this challenge incredibly easy in Epic Gun Game. This wasn't available when I made my original video, so definitely give Epic Gun Game a whirl if you don't have this challenge done yet. As for the score streaks category, I covered what I consider to be the most difficult ones already, including destroying the Apex, the RC-8, the drone packages, the air superiority, and the carpet bomb challenges. When it comes to the Special Ops challenges, I've done a few of the easy ones already, but the harder challenges I'll be going in depth on soon. My next video for this will be the Chimp Warfare challenge. If you don't have this done yet, I guarantee you will after seeing my video. So what do I have left? In this first category, which is Rig Weapons, I'm only stuck on killing three enemies with the Gravity Vortex. It's not often you see three enemies grouped together, and then being lucky enough to suck them all up with the Vortex is tough. Now the rig abilities were pretty easy. The only one I see people struggle with is kills with the Centurion. Now take note, the Centurion can't actually kill people as far as I know. It does do damage, but I don't think it can kill. This challenge simply means to kill an enemy caught in the EMP effects of the Centurion. As for the rig traits category, the only one I have to do is the Trophy Drone. And then of course, the dreaded rig killjoys. I'm only at 4 out of 12 here. Now I'm close on a few of these, such as Overdrive, Steel Dragon, Gravity Vortex, the Ballista, and the Reaper. It's the Bull Charge, the Active Camo, and the Centurion that are a pain for me. Seriously, look at this. 4 out of 75 for the Centurion. And that's in over 4 days played. Even with the addition of Hyper Team Deathmatch, I rarely see these. It's my hope that they'll eventually lower the limit for this challenge. For the Prestige category, I'm only missing a few of these. For example, I don't use akimbo weapons very often, so I'm missing the akimbo kills one and then this white dove challenge. I'm not much of a jumper in this game and I don't use my scuff controller, so getting kills while in the air are difficult for me. Now some of these combat efficiency challenges I just haven't even attempted yet, like the FMJ ones or the auto seer. If I devoted some time to these, I'm sure I could knock them out without much effort. For the perk 3 category, I'm only missing two. Sharpshooter, which is just long shots with the marksman perk and then the light touch. I'll admit that the light touch is a little harder than anticipated, simply because you can't force the enemy to run trip mines. And then comes the perk 2 challenges. I'm sure every challenge seeker will be familiar with one certain challenge in this category, tack resist. This challenge is on par with the Centurion Rig Killjoy one of hardest in the game. Again, in over four days played, I only have three notches towards this challenge. I've even ran the tack resist perk an entire prestige and not encountered a single scenario for this. I wanted to make mention of something that brings a glimmer of hope to this challenge. Recently on Reddit, one of the developers was talking about buffing the black hole projector. 
In the same sentence, he also mentioned buffing the blackout grenade. He gives his reasoning for this, as you can see here, including the fact that no one would choose the blackout grenade over the multi-useful jammer grenade. However, it's the comments after that that I wanted to highlight. Someone mentions the tack resist challenge to him, asking if it could be changed to something more easily completed. In response, he says he's passed the request along to the powers that be. And this, of course, is incredible news. If they fix this one and the Centurion one, I'm certain a lot of people would be at 100% sooner than later. Now for the equipment challenges, I'm slowly but surely grinding my way through them. The only one I see giving me trouble is the black hole projector. Even after receiving two buffs, it's still wank on the cob. I'm absolutely dreading getting the kills for this thing. Now the feats challenge is probably the hardest section in the game. Some of these are absolutely brutal. As it stands, I'm currently at 5 out of 12. But it's challenges like Return to Center that gives me nightmares. I've tried to find people camping their dicks off with trip mines, but more often than not, people just plop these down and then retreat. Some of the bio spike challenges don't seem to be that difficult. I just need to use a permanent unlock on the spike itself. Now the pull challenge is definitely a once in a lifetime thing. I rarely encounter anyone using C4. And even when I do, they don't usually use it as a C4 sandwich, but rather more tactically. The last category is operations, and I can't see myself ever completing some of these unless daily challenges are introduced. For example, the game mode challenges. I can't seem to find games in things such as Defender or Hardpoint. And when I do, I run into full parties that smoke me. I can do great in the lobbies myself, but that does nothing for me when I need to get actual wins. I should have tried to complete these challenges when the game first came out. Also, the limited game modes such as Reinforce and Demolition are difficult to complete if you can't play during those weekends, which is always the case for me. So overall, I'm pretty content with my current challenge progress. I'm sitting at approximately 86% done, but as I mentioned, I don't think it'll be possible for me to ever get 100% in this game, due to a few of these challenges being next to impossible to complete. I'm glad I at least got the Special Ops challenges completed though. I love to proudly display that epic Master Calling card. So let me know in the comments how far some of you guys are challenge-wise, or if there's any challenges you're stuck on. I'll be sure to scope out the ones that are mentioned the most and see if I can help. In the meantime, stay tuned for my next Special Ops Guide, which will be on Chimp Warfare.